Information and communication technology, it's everywhere we look. We interact with it every day, often without thinking about it, sometimes without even being aware that it's there. In homes, offices, schools, and even in IT cafes like this one. In fact, around the planet, people are using ICTs. These various types of technologies allow us to store, find, send, and receive information. They also make communication quicker and easier. In this lesson, we are going to explore these technologies and take a closer look at how ICTs affect our lives. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to explain the general advantage of new computer developments, discuss examples of the effects of computer developments on communication, and discuss examples of the effects of computer developments in areas of our daily lives. As I speak, new types of careers are being created in the computing world and people in these careers are developing quicker, smaller, more efficient, more user-friendly, more mobile and cheaper computers that will be available to you in the not too distant future. But if we really want to understand how new technologies might change our world in the future, we need to look first at how it has shifted our world already. The computer started way back as this old terminals that was mainly used for government institutions and especially the US Army was one of the big guys behind it. But the advancements as it went along over the years, it started becoming a business comp a computer. Businesses needed it to get advanced and eventually it was nice to have in your homes. Where we're sitting today, uh, you are old school if you don't have at least a couple of technology devices in your household. Because of your software needs and advances that has to happen in the computer, everybody wants to create the newest, biggest things. Your hardware is forced to always increase and to get better. Because of that, you always have a changing industry. The, the, your processes get bigger, your memory gets bigger. If you have to go back 10 years ago, you were talking about something like memory on a computer, you were talking about 32 megabytes. Today, if, I don't even think your cell phone's got 32 megabytes anymore. It's really, and it's increasing at a tremendous speed. Looking at the, the, the way technology has, has changed and where it's going now, why, wireless is the big thing that's in there. Everybody's walking around with a cell phone where they're receiving the emails on. Communication is at the, at the tip of your fingers. Tabs, which is a big thing that's in the marketplace right now. People can access their mail, they can process documents. Everything is right there with them now. There's no more going home and when you get home or going to the workplace and then you only access your technology. It's with you every, every minute of the day. The way the market is moving now and what the big companies are pushing for is it, everything's going to move into the cloud. We're talking about the cloud, everything has become internet-based. They're pushing that all your processing power, everything is going to sit in the cloud. And once it's in the cloud, anywhere in the world where you access your username and password, it's like accessing your computer without actually having your computer. The, the big thing that, the big reason they are pushing to get it in there is it's giving more processing power and more power to the user without actually having it locally with them, but it's all sitting on the internet. The careers will always change and there will always be new careers coming out. If you go back a couple of years before we actually had the internet, your computer uh, careers were limited to what happened in a business environment. As soon as the internet came along, you started getting graphic designers, web developers, which started advertising on the internet. And nowadays, because of the cloud computing, people have to put the processing power in the cloud. So there's new developers needed to do that. Also, as your hardware is changing, you need new engineers to develop this hardware and to maintain it. The, the careers that we see in the, IT, in the IT fields today, I don't think in 30 years time they'll still exist because there'll be complete new genre of careers available. Where once we would have handwritten and posted a letter at the nearest post box, we now type and send a letter in a matter of minutes without even leaving our homes. But what other ways are people using to communicate in this high-tech era? Cell phone communication has increased dramatically in South Africa, with even lower income households having at least one cell phone. Often people rely on prepaid airtime and please call means. In households with a higher income, users spend more money on cell phone contracts and use their phones for email, downloading ringtones and music, playing games, accessing the internet 
SMS, MMS and instant messaging. The younger family members generally have a better grasp on cell phone technology and are more likely to use their phones to their full potential. For example, they are more likely to keep in touch with their friends using Mixit and instant messaging than their parents are. This type of messaging is a fast and cheap way to chat. You type messages to each other and get an immediate response. Another popular way to communicate is Twitter. Twitter is a free social networking service that allows users to send updates or short text messages up to 140 characters long to subscribers. You can follow celebrities and news this way or even have a few followers yourself. There are people who also blog. A blog is an online personal journal with regular entries about personal experiences, activities and hobbies. One of the advantages of reading blogs is that they give you a more honest opinion than you might get from a web page. Some people use the web to collaborate with other people on projects. One way to do this is with a wiki. Wikipedia is a classic example of a wiki. It is an online encyclopedia. Like all wikis, Wikipedia articles are written by various people contributing their knowledge and ideas to it. The final published articles are usually freely available and don't belong to any one individual. Another example of how technological changes have changed the way we communicate is the use of podcasts to spread information. A podcast is an audio or video newsletter that can be played or viewed on a portable media player. In the past, you would have to be listening to the radio or watching TV at a specific time to catch, say, the news or your favorite program. Now we can download the podcast and listen or view media clips that you are interested in whenever we like. An RSS feed or really simple syndication feed is another way to make sure that you don't miss anything. This type of web feed gives people information the moment it happens. Users can subscribe to sites offering RSS feeds by clicking an RSS icon in a browser. The browser automatically checks all the users' subscribed feeds regularly at scheduled times and downloads any new content automatically without the user having to go to or log on to these sites. Besides saving lots of time, it also keeps the identity of the user anonymous, which reduces the risk of spam and identity theft. One way of communicating that I often use is YouTube. It offers everyone the opportunity to express themselves by publishing videos onto the net. Video conferences are becoming an everyday thing in the corporate world. Busy schedules make it more difficult for people to travel for meetings, and video conferencing allows them to meet and collaborate without ever leaving their offices. Using 3G, which supports much higher data rates, video conferencing has become easy. Social networking sites have also become a communications phenomenon. These types of sites allow people to communicate and share information between two or more people in an online community. People put their likes, interests and activities up on a web page for others to see. This allows them to keep in touch with each other even if they are far apart. As you have seen, the avenues of communication between people have opened up considerably as technology has advanced. But what does this mean for humanity as a whole? Well, now we can compare opinions of many people and discuss and evaluate facts to form our own opinions. Since news travels fast, we have the chance to respond and influence events quickly and effectively. Aside from direct communication, technological advances have had a radical effect in many other areas as well. This is particularly true in business and industry, where ICTs have made a large impact. I like um, the word enhance, because that's what technology does best. So what happens is that um, during the face-to-face -face teaching and learning session, you'll find that um, there are students who won't be able to participate, maybe probably because the class is too huge, there are so many students. At the same time, uh, the time is very short, but also you have one or two students who are very shy. So what happens is that um, after the lecture, students can go back to the web environment. This web environment will be an off-the-shelf application, which we usually call learning management system. But even in school that can't afford to buy a learning management system, they can create their own web environment, or they can even use social media. You know, they can have their 
their, their page in the Facebook where they do further interactions. It's a huge growth of e-books. Even the very old books, uh, libraries and authors are, are working with um, service providers like Google to ensure that um, their materials are becoming e-books. I mean, I'm, I'm one of the authors. I mean, it's in the best interest of myself as an author to have that book as an e-book, but also to have the, the book freely available to, to the public, but also to students. Most of the time, we don't give much thought to the technology we use to get around from place to place. Look at this GPS, for example. In the past, global positioning systems were predominantly used in military situations. Now many people are using them as a replacement for the map book. You can research various destinations to plan a trip, read blogs of people who have visited the destinations before for a more balanced view than the advertisements of hotels. You can book hotels and tours online and even use GPS to find your way in foreign cities. If we look at the car itself, many of the gauges we see on the dashboard are controlled by an onboard computer. For example, the petrol gauge doesn't just tell me how much petrol is in the fuel tank. It can also work out how much further I can drive before I'll need to fill up again. The onboard computer will also tell me when it's time to service my car. Pretty cool, isn't it? Technology is also used to control these traffic lights. Parking pay stations calculate the time the person's car was parked, the charge and the change that needs to be returned. Airlines also allow you to check in and get your boarding pass without queuing. In fact, computers have had a major impact on aviation. Computer software models can predict airflow without the need for wind tunnels. Flight simulators are used to train pilots. Flight control systems in planes can control the entire flight, including takeoff and landing. Aircrafts are designed on computers and airport traffic control is managed by computers. Almost all types of entertainment industries use computer technology to either create or distribute materials to the public. Technology is needed for the user to receive these materials. Whether it be TV, radio, gaming or art, technology forms a vital part of making these industries work. Really animation, what it really is, is it's a virtual world. It's everything we have in the real world, we have in the virtual world. Objects in the real world obviously are solid. There's, there's substance to it. In 3D, we cheat that. Everything in a way in 3D is a cheat, but it's very much based on reality. So a camera move will be a real camera move. You can fly through a 3D scene. And I like in, in this commercial here, in 3D animation, you have a character in the virtual world right there in front of you. You can change it, control the facials. You can make it smile. You can make it frown. You can make it look surprised. And animated over time, and everything is just right there. For example, this one character that we've done uh, recently, uh, it's a whole factory full of characters all doing their jobs and working around. All of that was done over several weeks. Uh, and not several weeks because we're waiting for the computer to calculate, but because obviously we had all the control and all the details to put in. The nice thing with 3D is you can work on individual elements. Somebody can work on the background, somebody can work on the foreground, and we're all working in parallel actually get this job done. The lovely thing with uh, live action and 3D animation nowadays is that there used to be quite a barrier between live action and 3D animation. There was no way of getting your, your camera move from a live action footage, get it into the computer seamlessly. So that nowadays is a lot easier. You can pull focus and everything else. And what you do is you put markers on the live action footage. And there's so many soft, sophisticated technologies now that you can actually track those points while the plate plays. It follows the pattern of those points. And that then is used to interpolate a camera move in 3D. So there's a lot of math behind it. The whole thing about 3D animation that's so fascinating is that it blends art and technology. The thing is with uh, the animation industry, it has indeed been quite dormant in the country for, you know, for the years. But over the last 10 years, it, is, it has picked up enormously. Uh, while before you couldn't imagine uh, animation films to be made in South Africa, now full-on animation films are being done locally, uh, which is quite an interesting opportunity also for, for new people coming into the industry because there's such a big demand right now for very skilled, passionate, artistic and technical 
people, so not just pure artist, artistry, but also technology, people who want to apply the technology to the film industry. Um, so there's a, an amazing boom right now of great opportunities out there. Available technologies are powerful tools, but with power comes responsibility. This means that as users, we need to be sure that we can evaluate and critically assess all the information we receive and send out into the world. I'm going to leave you with a task so that you can investigate the impact of communication and information technology a bit more on your own. Hopefully the discoveries you make will give you an even clearer understanding of technology in your life and in the lives of others. Give two advantages and two disadvantages for each of these. A virtual school where you do not go to school but rather download all lessons from the internet and submit assignments online. E-banking, shopping online.